Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today sitting down for a spicy Starfield news update. Todd Howard came out of hiding and he shared a decent amount of information in regards to Starfield, so we're going to dive straight into it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new here, you're into Starfield news, information, updates, all that stuff, I got you covered. You know I'm all over this game. Todd Howard can write on a napkin in a diner in the middle of Idaho that Starfield's going to have 500 more lines of dialogue than Fallout 4, and I would create an update on it. You know how we roll here, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Let's talk about Starfield. All right, first and foremost, the source of this information, an unlisted video over on Bethesda's YouTube channel called Constellation Questions. And it's there that we have a four minute interview with Todd Howard and Bethesda Game Studios community manager talking all things Starfield. What's interesting about this is all of these questions were crowdsourced and the way Todd spoke about things you can tell they read the scuttlebutt online, and I'll specify when exactly that is. But let's get into it, starting off with small things like the inspiration for Starfield on a game level. Of course, we saw in the first reveal trailer of Starfield, there were a number of books that inspired Starfield, and they said there are hints within those books as to what Starfield will be. But I also think it's important that we highlight what games they took inspiration from, and there's some old ones that many of you probably haven't heard of. I certainly am speaking for myself there, as one game he mentioned is called Sundog. This game looks very Starfield, although it's extremely old. It has the ability to visit over 50 cities on 18 planets. There's a dialogue mini game, sound familiar? You can go ahead and pilot your own ship. The other inspiration was a game called Traveler, which he called a D&D hard sci-fi type of game. And this is one of the first games that Todd Howard had programmed. So there's a little bit of history here. And that does lend some credibility to a lot of these Starfield leaks years and years before Starfield's actual reveal, which was that this type of sci-fi game was a big passion project of Todd. And given the history here, the old games that they are looking back on, I would say that is true. Continuing on, Todd answered the question on whether or not Starfield is considered hard sci-fi. The reason this is important is because eventually he gets into the fuel system, which does impact the gameplay. Now, Todd views it as a bit of a trap question, he called it, because it depends on your view of hard sci-fi. But ultimately, he says that Starfield is a hard sci-fi game to the team, but does remind us it's a video game, so it's not like you're going to go out into space and die because it's too cold out there or something like that. However, this does lead to him talking about the fuel system and how he's been reading papers on chronic physics where space bends in front of you and all this crazy stuff. But what he does let us know is that originally in Starfield, your ship would run out of fuel and the game would sort of just stop. You wouldn't be able to explore. And since you wouldn't be able to explore, it was kind of frustrating because you just wanted to get up and go and continue playing the game. Now in the game's current state, and we did cover this in our trailer breakdown, but it's been verbally confirmed, the fuel and gravity drive limits how far you can go in Starfield, but it doesn't run out of fuel necessarily. He does suggest that an update or mod can allow such a thing in the future, you know, running out of fuel, but this is what they're doing now. Now on paper, this sounds like a great choice. Of course, with any gameplay mechanic, we have to see how it feels, but I think this is the right idea because this is going to take the exploration game to a new level for Bethesda Game Studios. If there's one thing they got right, even in Fallout 76, it's exploration feels good. The point A to point B feels good. And with Starfield, that point A to point B is going to evolve because now you can go up into space and your point A to point B may be the empty space to a derelict space station. That is a very different type of traversal, especially because it's in a vehicle compared to always being on foot in other games. So I think it's important that they stop that as little as possible. It also sounds like this does lend the game a bit of progression. Again, as we showed in our Starfield gameplay breakdown, you can upgrade this fuel drive, you can upgrade this gravity drive, and what it'll allow you to do is visit more and more distant solar systems, unlocking more places to explore. So there is a sense of progression as you get deeper in the game and as you augment your ship more and more and more that you will see more and more and more. So I, I think it lends itself really well to the game, at least from what we're hearing here, what Todd is specifically telling us, and I like that. I do hope there is a survival mode at some point, which Bethesda seems to always add after launch, starting with Fallout 4. I do hope they do something along those lines because I could see Starfield with certain planet characteristics as we've seen indicated on the HUD with the hot and cold, the oxygen meters, the types of gravity, plus maybe a fuel system that Starfield could actually make again, on paper, 
a pretty cool survival experience. So I do hope they open things up there, but I imagine a modder will get to it first and then Bethesda will give us the more curated version months and months down the line. But I'm also curious to see on just that note, how post-launch support feels for Starfield compared to other Bethesda Game Studios games. Continuing on, he opens up a bit on the trait list here. This is another important part of Starfield and its character building. Now, just like we saw in the gameplay reveal, Starfield's traits come with a particular negative. Think of the flaw system in the outer worlds. He says that there are activities and quests, however, that allow you to remove said traits. And it tries to eliminate the option of, well, I don't like my character, so I'm going to start the whole game over. Each of these traits are something that you can solve that will remove them from the rest of your playthrough. And there's actually a new one that they showed here in this video called Hero Worshipped, mentioning an annoying, adoring fan that will show up and randomly speak to you, but at least he will give you gifts. I just wanted to shout this one out in particular because to me it just solidifies what i've said for months and months and months and months now which is that on at least a mechanic level on a design level starfield is that spiritual successor to oblivion kind of fallout 3 felt that way because they shared a lot of systems but obviously we saw with fallout 4 and 76 as well as even skyrim to some extent a lot of those systems were abandoned, but now we're seeing them transition back into what I thought were some of the greatest days of Bethesda Game Studios. My first BGS game, as many of you know, was Oblivion. I have such a soft spot for Oblivion. I think it's a fantastic video game. So the more and more I see of that energy in this game, which you will see soon in its dialogue, as well as this with the adoring fan, it's such a good idea to bring the adoring fan back. You know, I, I wonder what they're going to say, though, because of, of course, in Oblivion, we have the Biozura, Biozura, Biozura. But what are we going to get here in Starfield? What's that version of it going to be like? Will it look like the adoring fan from Oblivion? I can't wait to find out. I mean, it feels particularly painful because just yesterday we were supposed to be one month away from Starfield. So I'm glad Bethesda was self-aware enough to give us a little something. But man, it hurts because I just I want this game yesterday let's continue on though we got to talk about the big daddy which is the speech check system so one thing we learned about through tons of interviews tons of talk is that the dialogue in starfield will be more of a traditional style bethesda game this is what i mean when i say that todd howard is listening because the way he defined starfield's dialogue is a more classic bethesda style conversation system this is something i only hear the community saying whereas whenever he's spoken previously about say fallout 3 or fallout 4 or skyrim he calls them different renditions of the dialogue system so to see them start referencing it as a more classic style of bethesda game studios dialogue and if you go back to even 76 when wastelanders launched they started to reference like oh it's like fallout 3 it seems like todd has borrowed the terminology from the community which is good to see that they are staying tapped in you never know who's watching todd could be watching this right now todd if you are say hi in the comments down below Let's continue though. This dialogue system looks legit. We got a small, small preview of it in action. I'll let you see it for yourself. Speech persuasion system. You're not talking us out of this score. It feels like it's part of the dialogue, but you're spending points to persuade them. You're willing to give up the ship just like that? Now, as you see, there's a bit of a speech mini game that happens here when you select persuasion. So it's not necessarily the skill check where you click persuasion and based off your skill versus the threshold set for the person you're speaking to if you surpass that like let's say you need 50 speech or more and you have 75 that you'll just automatically pass it seems like you hit persuasion and you enter this mini game that's very much like oblivions i see now what bethesda game studios was talking about because in oblivion as you went to persuade people you would enter this very obscure weird janky mini game where their facial expressions would change as you'd go around this wheel and continue selecting things and trying to increase your overall reputation with this character it felt really off this feels like it they took that system and literally stretched it out and put numbers next to it so what happens is you'll see here that there are turns for the persuasion 
and there are color tones next to each of the responses plus one plus three plus five and i'm not sure what exactly these color tones indicate if it means like red is too much like you're really pushing it but maybe you'll finish the persuasion job in one turn or one is playing it too safe i'm not sure how it all goes out but you have a certain amount of points and you see here in the gameplay that, that they select the option with plus three and suddenly this this space pirate is a little more hesitant by the way sick armor sick mask absolutely love the visual design here todd howard said it feels more natural and not like you're just entering another mode again this is likely referencing oblivion where you would go completely out of the actual dialogue itself and enter this wheel-based mini game but one thing that has gone under the radar is todd said very briefly that in the terms of content and scope Starfield is just a bit more in the terms of what they've done before. That, at first, for a lot of people, was a cause for concern. But then, what Todd said afterwards is what I think we've all been dying to hear, and hopefully we see with the launch of the game, is that they're focusing more on depth. And it's there he gets into the dialogue system for Starfield, where he talks about how the game now has 250,000 plus lines of dialogue. Now, I know we've talked a bit about Todd's ability to focus more on quantity than quality in the past. And I do think that's fair with, of course, one of the big talking points with Starfield being the thousand plus planets. It's something we definitely need to keep our eyes on. However, to me, 250,000 lines of dialogue or more is a very good sign when you're talking about a role-playing game specifically when the role-playing game before that i love how they cut 76 out of the mix here by the way but the role-playing game before that which was fallout 4 had 111,000 lines of dialogue and you have to remember the main character in that game was voiced now starfield with a protagonist that is not voiced has 250,000, more than double what Fallout 4 had. And if you go back to Skyrim, where the game's character was not voiced, it has four times more the dialogue there. Now, some folks had inquired to me over on Twitter, does this mean that things like books, text logs, whatever, terminal files, are all of those going to account for lines of dialogue? I think it differs from team to team. In my personal experience, we don't refer to lines of dialogue as the same things as text files, as logs you can find on the terminal, et cetera, et cetera. Those are two separate things. However, the double-edged sword of this type of depth here in writing is that a lot of players won't see this stuff. You may do just one playthrough of Starfield like many hundreds of thousands of players are going to do and call it a day but that depth will shine in your character progression where NPCs in the world will respond to you based off maybe your background that you choose at the beginning of the game, that they will have different lines of dialogue depending on what choice you make when going down a quest path. That's where the depth is and why the count in dialogue is so significant here because in a standard playthrough, you may see that same 111,000 that you saw across all of Fallout 4 if you exhausted every single option there. However, here in Starfield, given that we saw right then and there before our very eyes, you click on persuasion and then there's a number of different lines for you to select based on how you want to progress. Apply that to any character in the game that you actually want to persuade or if this applies to other speech check options and it increases the actual dialogue demand exponentially. Ultimately though, I don't know at the end of the day. It seems like it just differs from team to team. Although I just imagine when they talk dialogue, that sounds like character interaction to me personally. So I would take it as that, which is infinitely more exciting when you think about the books, the stories that you can learn within the universe of Starfield. The, of course, the terminal files you're gonna find in all these various dungeons, all these various cities, the notes, et cetera, et cetera. Like there's gonna be so much. And that's because this is the foundation of a brand new game world. You have to account for all these things and they've been creatively obsessing over this for years and years and years. So I am helplessly excited after seeing all of this. I'm just consistently hearing the right things. I remember I tried to keep my guard up, but they continue to say things that I've been dying for Bethesda to say for a long while now. The focus on depth, the focus on dialogue, the focus on role-playing, the odes, the honorary mentioning of oblivion. 
they're taking a look at their own RPG portfolio, not what's trending in the industry with online play and stuff along those lines. Starfield looks amazing. Every time I see it, I get that shot of energy. Like, man, give me that now. I cannot wait. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. So it's time for me to stop talking and it's time for you to fire away. So let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Other than that, please do follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.